This week on El Cara Ham Radio, I'm going to travel down to Cedars of Lebanon, Tennessee, where a poda presentation, How to Do a Poda, was presented by the Stones River Amateur Radio Club and the Macon Area Ham Radio Society. It's always good for our club to peek in on what other clubs are doing to see and to get other ideas. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, I drove down to Cedars of Lebanon in Tennessee. This is a wonderful park, and the two clubs were putting on this how to do a poda. Uh, we had equipment already set up by the time I got there, and they had this pavilion already uh, set aside for the presentation, which worked out really well. A little bit chilly this morning, but not too bad. As we pan to the left, you can see the pavilion. They already had their AV equipment set up as well as a projector. Had a few uh, audiovisual issues, but we were able to get the presentations off without much of a hitch. Folks, this is a great idea that maybe even your club could sponsor for your area. How to do a poda, because many of us in the hobby are involved already. Let's peek in. Did you believe? <laughs> the great thing here was Steve opened up the presentation with a little bit of magic, and uh, it was kind of fun to watch. Uh, so if you ever get a chance, uh, see if you can get uh, Steve to pull out a deck of cards and show you what's going on. Uh, a very great way to open up a presentation, get everybody's attention by utilizing a little bit of magic. The next presenter was Jamie AA4K, and he's going to go over some of the basics of getting started with how to poda. I'm going to talk about what is actually involved in getting on the air. Okay. Um, so we're talking about the activation itself. Later on, we're going to be talking about the equipment. The Stone River Club is going to be kind of focused on what, what kind of equipment is needed. I'm going to be talking more about how do you actually get on the air? Now, first of all, how many of you guys have actually done activations before? I know we did a poll on the um, spreadsheet. Separate, not half of you, it looks like. Um, and so the rest of you, I assume, no activations, but you've heard about it. Is that how this is going? Okay, so you're just interested. It is, Parks on the Air is a, is a relatively new um, uh, activity, uh, it's like an awards activity, that seems to have really reinvigorated the hobby for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people are, are kind of skittish about what to what to say when you get on the air, right? I am still, in, in December I'll be three years as a ham, uh, ham radio operator. Um, and thankfully, Parks on the Air was around whenever I started. So whenever I start first turn on the radio, I'm tuning into these stations, I'm hearing people giving this little quick, easy exchange, parks on air. Okay, I, can, I think I can do that. I picked up on what they were saying and uh, just thought I could do that. So I started off just hunting, probably like most of you. Have, has everyone hunted a parks on the air? Not, not everybody's even hunted, okay. Um, so if you know what the hunting is, you, you know that you're giving your call sign and usually your state and a signal report. That's usually what we say. Uh, but so it's an easy exchange. It's it breaks down that barrier of entry. It breaks down that barrier of uh, what do I say when I get on the radio? I don't want to have to sit there and talk to people I don't know. Right? It's it's intimidating. Well, this kind of does help, right? Um, so uh, as, as you can see from the little screen up here. Um, this was uh, my little splash screen. It's just a little activation that I did in uh, Colorado. I went elk, I did an elk hunt, and I was playing radio with my brother and some friends were elk hunting out in Colorado at Unca Padre National Forest. Uh, this was the first of four failed activations out in Colorado last year. Um, but I had a lot of fun. And as you can see, you might be able to see it. You can, I can email you the presentation later if you want. Uh, but it was a very pretty place to play radio. 
Next up was Marvin, W0MET, and his uh, additional presentation on how to poda. Marvin's also with the Stones River Amateur Radio Club. Uh, I'm Marvin Turner, W0MET. I'm the president of Stones River. Thanks again for coming out here today. I do appreciate you guys all uh, signing up and, and making be a part of this. We try to push this out as far as we could and get as much crowd as we could here and, uh, you know, try to make this something, you know, bigger and, and, and hopefully this is just uh, maybe, you know, one of we could do, you know, a spring and a fall, maybe we just do this annually, make this thing bigger uh, and hopefully grow it and make it even better. Um, so, uh, and we'll try and, you know, find ways to change it up and do things along the way. I, I want to talk about just a couple brief things uh, that um, Jamie didn't mention and Mark's going to go into some of the equipment and talk about those things. Uh, Parks on the Air really started back in 2016 with the uh, with between the ARRL and it was kind of an event for the National Park System on their anniversary back then, and um, they didn't really want to continue it after that, and so uh, there was a 501c3 organization created called Parks on the Air, and, and they've really built this up and ran with it now, and, and it's just huge, and so. Um, Parks on the Air group, I mean, it, it's got a fair amount of funding to it, uh, but it does take um, a little bit of funding to keep the website and some of those other things going, you know, hosting, things like that. It does cost money, so if you can ever donate to Parks on the Air, you can certainly do that uh, through their uh, website. And, uh, you know, a lot of the people, like Tom uh, and, and the other gentleman here somewhere, uh, you know, they, they're volunteers. They're, they're not getting paid to do this. Uh, and so, uh, you know, long before... They started doing where you take your log and you update it yourself or, or upload it yourself into uh, the POTA app. Uh, you'd have to send your log, uh, your ADF file, to you know somebody in your uh, in your area, whether you're a zero call or a four call, or whatever. And it'd be like K four. Um, what was it? K like. I don't remember what the... South Carolina. Yeah. Bill, what was Mr. Bill's name? Uh, I can't remember what it was either. Uh, Washington Pacific. K4 Whiskey Pop. Yeah. K4 but, Whiskey Pop. But anyway, you, you sent to that email, and, and that's what would be, you know, that's where you'd get it, and they'd spend a day or two loading it, and they, I mean, they could get 100 calls out of a weekend. I mean, you get, you know, 60, 70 people activating in, you know, an area, <laughs> or just, you know, one afternoon. So it became pretty crazy. Um, but over the years, you know, it's really uh, grown over the airwaves. Uh, ham radio's just taken off and expanded huge because of parks on the air. It gives people who, uh, you know, or maybe, you know, homeowner association lot, association lot, they can't have big antennas, can't have towers up, they don't have the ability to do it. It gives them a way to, I mean, maybe they just live in apartment or condos. It really gives them a way to get out and get on the air and get on HF. And, and I mean, if you get on any weekend, uh, for sure, uh, you get on the, on the airwaves on the HF and, you can usually hear a park or two out there for sure. So it's really expanded and, and really, um, you know, helped out ham radio uh, and, and really helped people figure out, you know, what is it? Because so many people come up to you while you're in the park and say, what are you doing? Or, or hey, are you a ham operator? You know, it's like, so, so some people start to recognize it and, you know, know what's going on. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that I, I have over 50,000 activators or sent in logs, but I think there's a lot more than that, Tom. I don't know if you know the number offhand. I don't either, but I, I know there's that's a lot. So uh, they will usually put out is a monthly or quarterly update mm -hmm. of how many you know. And this I think Parks and Air is now expanded worldwide. So I mean it, it's over gone hundred countries now. Over hundred countries. So it's just crazy how this has really picked up and gone. Uh, and then next up we had Mark KD4EYF and started talking about some of the equipment uh, and ways to get on the air fairly inexpensively. Convinced the wife into let me get two ICOM 7300s. And there's a mindset behind that. It's not that I want a bunch of radios, but I've got one at home, that one lives at home, and I've got a photo radio. So I don't have to swap them back and forth. Uh, today, I did bring one radio from home, but normally, whenever I, I'd go to do photo, most of the stuff's already in the truck. And, and that helps me keep stuff together. Uh, power. You know, you gotta turn that radio on, you gotta make that, that run. So that's that's a key thing, and it's a little figure of what options with that. Antennas, wow. You know, that's just endless, and that's pro and to me that is the most important part of your whole kit is having a good antenna. That you can have a great radio, 
you get one of those a radio that pushes 200 watts out of it, but if you don't have an antenna, you ain't got anything. Um, feed line. Uh, a lot of opportunities with that. Uh, I guess my big thing with feed line is make sure you got enough. And we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. One of the great things about getting on the air with Parks on the Air, POTA, is the equipment does not have to be overly complicated. Here we have Marvin going through his POTA bag, and uh, one of the things that really jumps out at you is it doesn't have to be very large. Here we've got an antenna that he can wind around the spool. He's got a smaller battery, lithium-ion battery there, where he can power his radio for the length of time that he needs. Those lithium-ion batteries can last for hours, and because you can basically run them to zero, uh, again, you can be out there for quite a while. Most of the time, a parks on the air is not going to take very long. You might only need an hour to activate a park, but a lot of that's going to depend on the conditions and how well your antenna and equipment is getting out, especially if you're QRP, just 5 watts or less. And then Jamie started showing his small little setup, and uh, he actually purchased this off of Amazon from another ham radio hobbyist that likes to build these very small QRP kits. I believe this one can do CW as well as voice. And uh, again, what we're trying to show the audience, or what they are trying to show the audience, is it doesn't take expensive equipment to get started by doing parks on the air. In fact, the smaller you can make it, the easier you can be to transport, the more fun a parks on the air will ultimately be. But folks, a presentation about parks on the air or any ham radio event wouldn't meet muster without having some good food. We had some pulled pork, and we had two types of chili on this particular day and uh, good food really makes uh, a slightly chilly day a little bit better. Help your club do parks on the air. Get out there and teach others how to get on the air. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4 BDP Brian. Hope you liked the video and 73.